One large Americano. One large Java chip for me. Be it this coffee, the machines that we choose, or in general the choices that we make in our life, we like to make them large. But today, the machine that we are going to talk about is definitely not large. In fact, it can put a lot of super bikes to shame. Presenting the Street Triple RS 2020 model. So today in this video, I'll be talking about the difference between the Street Triple R and the Street Triple RS. Is the extra premium worth it or not? And talk about things that I've liked about this motorcycle and disliked. My likes and dislikes about this motorcycle would actually revolve around the practicality of this motorcycle on Indian roads and what sort of riders should actually go for such a machine. Also, we will discuss about whether this bike is suitable for touring, how does it work in city traffic and highway runs. And lastly and most importantly, we'll talk about how much mileage does the Street Triple RS give and how much money you need to shelve out in terms of down payment and EMI to get this beauty home. So let's get started. So to start off things, let's talk about the changes in this new 2020 model. First of all, the bug-eyed headlight design, which is typical of the Street Triple models, has changed a little bit. It has become a lot more sharper and a lot more appealing. In the previous version, these headlights were a little round in shape while still maintaining that bug-eyed character. Here, they are a lot more sharper. You can see those sharper lines here, which give it an even more aggressive feel. Next, on the RS, as compared to the R, you get the top of the line all-in suspension at the rear. In the R, you will only get Showa suspension at the front and the back. Here. The rear suspension has been replaced with an Olin's suspension which is much more adjustable and can be tuned for track performance as well. And the last major difference between the R and the RS is the availability of two additional riding modes. One, the track mode and the second one is the rider configurable mode. So obviously the rider configurable mode will give you a lot of control over your bike in terms of how you set up ABS traction control and the maps that you choose. So you get that. Uh, flexibility in the RS to ride it on the road, ride it on the track and customize it to the type of riding you want to do. So since we talked about the additional riding modes that we get on the Street Triple RS, let's just give you a detailed walkthrough of what all riding modes are on offer in this beautiful machine and also give you a sneak peek into the new instrument cluster that is on offer in the Street Triple RS. In fact, this instrument cluster is also there in the Triumph Tiger 900 as well and all new bikes from Triumph. So let's switch on this display and as soon as you switch on this display you are greeted with this beautiful looking Triumph logo which I just love and after the Triumph logo you have this street triple sign and then you get into the main instrument cluster. Very neat looking, very minimalistic design that's what I felt when I first looked at this display. Mind you I ride a Tiger 800 XEA 2017 model which comes with a analog display so this is like a new world to me but uh, the ease of operating this display has amazed me and it can be done just by using two simple buttons one is the home button here on the right hand side just before the starter button and on the left hand side you have a very convenient joystick to go right left up down as you can see I am scrolling down and all that information coming about the service due interval uh, you can change the high, auto and low contrast mode for the screen and you have different styles of this display as well. So let me change this style. So now you see you have a different bug-eyed look and you can get into a new style here. See this, a little different here as well. So very customizable, that's what I felt. Talking about the main USB, uh, the riding modes. So you can access it in two ways. First is by pressing the M button here which is mounted here on the left hand side of the handlebar. Just click it and you will get all these modes. Right now the bike is in sport mode and you can toggle in between and get to the track mode and the road mode. So 
since this bike is stationary right now the best way is to go into home uh, then you get the complete main menu and there you see the riding modes once you click the riding modes you get the rider mode which is only available on the street triple rs then you have the rain mode the road mode sport and track which is again an exclusive to the street triple rs so once we get inside these modes you have three options to configure let's get into one of these let's get into the track mode for example and you see abs so you can configure the abs to road settings or track settings so since you are in the track mode it is advisable to keep it in the track settings uh, then you have the map map you will have three types of maps one is a rain map for riding in the rain and a road map and a sporty map so it's kept on the sporty map since it's in the track mode and finally you have the traction control which also has these four settings here track sport road and rain traction control tailored to all these types of riding conditions so clearly there are a lot of options here to configure your ride the way you want to ride it and that is something that electronics offer in new age bikes like these and while operating all these buttons one thing that you will notice very easily is the great emphasis triumph puts on the build quality everywhere across this machine you can see some awesome build quality from triumph look at these buttons these buttons are so well made and uh, very tactile in terms of their feedback in addition to looking good these bar and mirrors are very functional so it's not something that would just enhance the visual appeal of your bike but will actually be very useful on the road as well so while we know that the street triple rs is essentially a track machine but let's talk about its practicality on a day to day basis and the first thing that comes to my mind is the ground clearance of this bike the ground clearance here is 165 mm and that is huge if you compare it to what we have on tourers adventure tourers if i may call it like the kawasaki versus which had a ground clearance of 170 mm so just 5 mm short of that so there is no issue of scraping your bottom when you are going over speed breakers so from an indian road usage standpoint it should not be an issue at all talking about the performance of the street triple rs as i told you i am totally amazed by this machine and that came as a big surprise to me because i ride a bike like the tiger 800 which is essentially a triple cylinder engine which is very similar to what we have here this is 765 cc and that is almost 800 cc but the way these two engines are tuned it's completely different this machine offers 123 bhp of power and is an absolute maniac on the road the thing that works in its favor is the astonishingly low weight of the bike 165 kg for a machine that gives 123 bhp of power is simply amazing just to keep things in context a duke 390 from ktm also weighs the same and offers just 45 bhp of power while this one offers almost 3 times more power so just imagine having a duke 390 between your legs and having 3 times more power imagine how flexible that will be imagine how smooth that will be and imagine how powerful you will feel so that is the exact feeling that i get when i ride this machine although triumph will hate me to compare this bike to the duke 390 from ktm but i'm just comparing it from a footprint standpoint beyond that this bike is completely out of league of a bike like a duke 390 just because of the sheer build quality the electronics on offer and the total comprehensive package that triumph offers in such a beautiful machine even though it's a race oriented bike made for the track but the riding position is very comfortable in this riding position i can keep my back straight i can tuck down and ride hard there is no issue at all but if you want to buy this bike and want to tour on it uh, i know it's not meant for touring but i still know people would end up buying this bike and try to tour on it that is why i am explicitly mentioning this point touring in this bike might be an issue just because of the amount of wind blast that you get i was trying to clock 200 kmph on the yamuna expressway today while coming here but i could not go above 160 kmph just because of the wind blast that was there on this bike a part of the reason for that may be the riding gear that i have which is meant for adv bikes 
and has a lot of loose parts that catch a lot of the wind blast and my helmet is also not oriented for sport spikes but the overall confidence kind of deteriorates just because of the wind blast that comes on this bike so from a touring standpoint doing 700 800 kilometers a day might be a challenge if you are trying to ride hard but from a seating standpoint at the same time the bike does not have any issues the seat quality is pretty good the textures used on the seat provide a lot of grip and the way your knees kind of hug the tank give you a very comfortable riding posture and when we talk about outright acceleration i am not a sports bike rider but i try to throttle it out from 0 and reach 100 as fast as possible and i think i managed to reach there in about 4 4 and a half seconds so this is a pretty fast machine and can get scary for the rider pretty fast as well so while from a touring perspective i would not really recommend this bike although you can make some modifications and make your life a little difficult while touring but from a city use perspective this bike might be just the perfect bike that you need the lightweight the nimbleness and the power on offer makes it very easy to cut through traffic all you have to do is spot an opening open the throttle a little bit and you will whiz past all the traffic and reach your destination in a jiffy yo because this bike is a naked bike the heat dissipation is planned out uh, pretty well unlike a fared bike where all the heat flow comes on your legs but a disclaimer from my side you should not ride this bike without riding gear even though the heat dissipation is less but it is still there so if you are riding in proper riding pants and full length riding shoes you would not feel the heat but in normal jeans definitely you could feel the heat and one of the major highlights of this machine is the updated exhaust this exhaust has a much deeper growl and keeps you excited while you are riding it out on the highway also triumph has added a carbon fiber tip to the exhaust which looks stunning and increases the aesthetic appeal of this motorcycle One, two, three, go. <laughs> One more thing that I'm really impressed about is the brakes on offer on the Street Triple RS. The Brembo brake setup is just amazing. You can use the brake with just one finger tap. and the bike will stop at your command so we have talked about the good things about the street triple rs but let's not talk about a couple of things that i would classify as issues the first issue that i faced was that the quick shifter here is not very smooth at low speeds like 60 and 70 kmph it has been marketed as something which should work very smoothly but operating the quick shifter would actually require you to open the throttle completely partial openings of the throttle will not help you shift gear smoothly which acts like a bummer so i feel this is something that triumph could improve second i feel that the headlight uh, does not offer decent throw for fast night riding the high beam is not very confidence inspiring the low beam has a very average spread even though this bike comes with a led setup but surprisingly when you use the dipper and when both these lights are on the throw is excellent but my question is we'll not be riding while pressing the dipper button all the time constantly so for me night riding with the high beam on is not a very confidence inspiring experience so now let's talk about the competition in the segment the street triple rs i feel sits at the top of the middleweight naked category of motorcycles the competition on offer is the z900 earlier the gsx 1000 used to be the competition as well but I haven't seen many of those on the road. The price difference between both these bikes is huge. The Z900 on road in Delhi would come around nine nine and a half lakh rupees, while this one from Triumph will come in at twelve and a half lakh rupees. So a clear difference of three lakhs at a minimum between these two bikes. But is this bike worth it? I feel that this is much more nimbler than the Z900. The Z900 has a weight of greater than two hundred kgs. This one is at least 40 45 kg lighter than the Z900. While the Z900 has a inline 4 engine which is very smooth, much more smoother than the triple from Triumph. But if you are going for a naked bike, 
what you need is nimbleness agility and that is one thing that i feel the z900 misses out on so now let us talk about the most important part that you have been waiting for what does it cost to take the street triple rs home so let's talk about figures the ex showroom price of the street triple rs is 11.35 lakhs for this you will need to pay a down payment of close to 2.15 lakh rupees add to that an insurance of 40000 rupees and registration charges of about 1.5 lakh so essentially what you will need to pay to start your loan process is around 4 lakh rupees and on top of that if you take a loan for 3 years the emi to get this bike home will cost you around 30000 rupees per month get into a showroom have 4 lakh rupees in your pocket and you can take this bike home in terms of owning this bike one question that everybody asks is the mileage that this bike would give i do not believe in judging super bikes in terms of the mileage that they offer because they are meant to offer a lot of fun riding experience but still considering the high petrol prices mentioning a mileage will help you factor in the cost the mileage the street triple rs gives is 15 to 16 kilometers per liter if you are riding hard riding hard would mean aggressive throttling 140 150 kilometers per hour speed maintaining a consistent speed of about 130 140 kmph on an open stretch of road but if you are riding at an easy pace inside the city maybe like 80 90 or 100 kmph max then you can expect a mileage of about 19 to 21 kilometers per liter which is decent for an engine that gives you 123 bhp of power and is a 765 cc engine so to conclude i feel that the street triple lineup offers two great bikes the street triple r and the rs rs being the variant that you would want to go for if you want outright performance i hope you found this information useful and it will help you make your decision about which naked bike to go if you have a budget of around 10 to 12 lakh rupees enough said i am really wanting to ride this bike now i'll just hop onto this bike and ride on the highway again i'll see you in the next video guys bye bye see you